The presentation today may be something you already know how to do, but this question comes up repeatedly in my work as a .NET coach, which means there are still people who don't know how to do this. There are other people who think they know how to do this, but are hacking the solution. So I encourage you to watch the video. My bet is 80% of you that do will learn something you didn't already know about validation controls and how to use them properly. So here's the basic problem. There are controls in the .NET framework that cannot be wired to the standard validation controls. The checkbox control is one example. You can't use the required field validator because after all, it has a value, it's true or false. And you can't provide a regular expression validator on one of the others because it's a Boolean value. So if I want to make sure a checkbox is checked before the user continues, and I want to make sure that the error message shows up in the error summary control, like every other error, how do I do that? Well, you'll see on our window here right now, we have a checkbox that says you must click here to continue. I'm going to go drop a button on the screen next just to cause the post back. And the next thing we're going to do, let's just put a, a carriage return in there to get some spacing, is we're going to put a validation control in there. Now I've already said you can't wire a validation control to the checkbox. But what you can do, and most people don't know still, is that you can put a custom validation control in here. You don't need to wire that custom validation control to a control, even though there is a space in here to put it, to control the validate. You could you know, drop down and, and pick one if there was there, but you don't have to use it, and that's the beauty of the custom validator control. So we're going to go in here, we're going to supply an error message. Uh, we'll put these in alphabetical order so I can see them. And we're going to say Please check the box first. And then we're going to go down here and just put some asterisks in there. Uh, you may not know this yet. Uh, if you put an asterisk in the text field, that's what shows up next to your control. The next thing we're going to do is put the summary control in here. So we have a custom validation summary control that shows up. And this will display the error message that we put in the text down here. Pretty simple system. Now, we've got everything wired up. What we want to do next is we want to create a custom validation uh, event handler. And we're going to do that by double clicking on our uh, custom validation control there. Um, and that should create a server validate event that has uh, object and uh, the args value being passed in. Now the args parameter as an is valid and we're going to assume that it's false. And then we're going to go in here and say if I don't think I said anything like a checkbox and do the particular value. So if checkbox checked, actually we're just going to do the easy way if not checkbox. So checkbox is false. Then we're going to go in here and say args. Actually, I'm going to say if the checkbox is checked. And args is valid is true. So that's going to handle our validation. Next thing we want to do is we're going to put something in our button here. And this is the other piece that people miss. When you're working with the validation controls, yes, the, the validation controls will generate JavaScript and uh, put that JavaScript and, and do your validation and, on the client side. Uh, however, people can turn off JavaScript and get 
past your validation controls, and then come in here, and on your button one, click event handler, they're going to go, you know, whatever you put in here is, is going to work. So whenever you're writing code that is dependent on validation, what you want to do is you want to say if is valid, and then do your code. You don't want to do your code afterwards. Um, since there's really nothing that I'm going to do uh, here, I'm just going to say, you know, your processing code here. I don't have any place to go with this code uh, right now. So what's going to happen is somewhere after the page load event and prior to the button one click event, this custom validation code is going to run. We're going to see that the is valid is false here, and it's going to come back up and display the error message in our summer control up here. Now we're going to try to run this and see if we can get the browser window to be small enough and, and so that you can see in this window what's going on. Okay, so if I just click the button here, let's see, please check the checkbox first. If I go ahead and check it now and click the button, that error goes away. And that's how you deal with that particular situation. Uh, you're going to need to use those custom validator controls uh, in just about any of the other situations where you can't wire a validation control to uh, a control that's on your screen.